guys welcome back to my channel Simone here today I'm going to be filming my worst books of 2018 and yeah this is going to be a relatively negative video because these are 10 books that I really did not like in 2018 but you know what we've got to do the good and the bad I will link below my best of 2018 which went up on Friday down below for you so you can go and check those out if you would like a bit more positivity in your life uh, but let's get started with the first one so the first book in my least favourite books of the year is Splintered by A.G. Howard. This one is an Alice in Wonderland kind of like retelling. Really it's more of like a sequel I guess it would be. Basically it follows a girl, I forget her name, I think it's Alyssa. I think the girl's name's Alyssa, her mum's name's like Alicia. It was it was just a bit much for me. Um, basically it follows a girl named, like I said, Alyssa who's um, great grandmother is basically Alice but um, but at the time they all think they all kind of thought she was crazy and she ended up in like a mental hospital and um, Alyssa's mum is starting to, to have similar things and so she's now in a mental hospital and now Alyssa's like starting to get things herself and I don't know I just felt like this was very badly done also I got incredibly bored like there wasn't things were happening but I just didn't care and I don't know there was something about this book it really did not gel with me and I genuinely just didn't like the mental health in it I just thought it was really like something about it just really grinded my gears and I did not enjoy it at all um yeah I wouldn't recommend this I do want to read A.G. Howard's is it Roseblood the Phantom of the Opera retelling because I didn't have an issue so much with her writing style it was a bit convoluted at times but I don't think it was like terrible I think it was just the story because to be honest I'm not the biggest Alice in Wonderland fan but that doesn't off that doesn't stop me always loving a book like I really liked Heartless by Marissa Meyer so yeah I just think that this particular one was a bit of a fail for me next up I want to talk about The Maze Runner by James Dashner which I started off buddy reading with my boyfriend but he DNF'd it about halfway through because he really didn't like it I did continue reading it and finished it but I also really did not like it this follows a boy named Thomas who kind of shows up one day um, in a maze he kind of finds himself there he doesn't really remember anything beforehand and he finds himself um, amongst a group of boys um, who call themselves the Gladers and they're essentially trapped in the middle of the maze and every night the doors to the maze shut um, and if they are outside of that they will probably die because the stuff out in the maze is going to kill them and then every day there's like what they call runners who kind of run around the maze and are trying to find things that are different in order to try and figure out a way to get out. I despise this book. I read it in November and uh, I really wished I hadn't to be honest with you. I'm glad I finished it so I can at least say that I've definitely finished it so I know that I don't like it. I definitely will not be continuing on with the series because I mean I hated the first one so why would I continue to read the next ones? <laughs> Um, I have heard bad things about this anyway, a lot of people don't like this I think, um, but there are a few people that do really like it. For me the writing style was terrible, like firstly the chapters are really short and like nothing happens. You can read 10 chapters and you are still in the same place that you were at the start, yeah, which really really wound me up because I was like what's the point in me continuing to read this, like I just felt like I was getting nowhere. Um, and basically the the language in this so basically within the group essentially what i think's happened is james dashner wanted to swear in his book and he was like i still want it to be ya so i can't swear so what i'll do instead is i'll make up my own swear word so like the words like shuck face was used a lot um like bugging was used and like stuff like that it just really annoyed me because it was just so ridiculous and i was like if you just if you want to swear, like, don't make it a YA book, but then it's a what it doesn't make sense. I don't like it. I really just thought it was really badly done. I didn't know, like, anything really happened, and, yeah, it was not an enjoyable read. Next up is actually a book that I read in December, so you will probably hear a bit more about this in my December wrap-up, which will be up on Friday, but I, um, but this is basically, um, a net galley book that I was, um, kindly gifted and um, I, I'm very much appreciative of that um, but this was A Murder in My Hometown by Rebecca Morris which is a non-fiction book about a boy who goes missing and then his body uh, was found in the river and it is written by Rebecca Morris who lived in the town where this boy was killed and she 
like that's her hometown she knew the boy I think and she kind of it's her where she grew up essentially and it's about that now I would have enjoyed this had it been more about the crime I felt like there was a lot about the author um her like growing up and that and for me it wasn't a memoir the whole point of the book or the way it was kind of um it was kind of advertised I guess um is that it's about the crime it's about the boy who um was killed and about what happened and I can understand some kind of context about what uh, about the um, town itself but it was a lot more about her and the things that she did growing up and that and then every now and then there'd be a little bit about the crime and I just thought it was a bit sort of convoluted and I didn't really understand I didn't know whether it was supposed to be a memoir about her or if it was about to be the or if it's supposed to be about the murder and for me it never really gelled together and I just felt like it was a bit clunky and I didn't really like that so but yeah so it wasn't for me but if that's the type of thing that you like or you enjoy that about um sort of murder true crime stories then you'll probably like this one next up I'm going to be a little bit controversial and I'm going to talk about The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien which is the second book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy I really quite liked the first book which is The Fellowship of the Ring and to be honest with you the second book um, or the second movie in the film adaptations is actually my least favourite film and I really did not enjoy the second part of this story. Basically um, I'm assuming that most people know what The Lord of the Rings is about but if you don't know um, it follows a group of kind of different people so you have uh, there's hobbits, elves, dwarves, like all different types of people and they're essentially all um, escorting Frodo, the hobbit, who has a ring that he's trying to destroy because it belongs to like uh, Sauron, who is the kind of Dark Lord, yeah, basically. And this, I feel like this is quite a filler book. Like it, to me, the first one I feel like is them kind of setting that up. And I don't, haven't read the third one yet, and I will read it hopefully this year. But the third one essentially is about kind of what happens at the end but I do feel like this is quite a filler book and to, to me it just really bored me I just didn't enjoy reading it also there's a lot of kind of I do feel like J.R.R. Tolkien he has this thing where he likes to over talk basically he likes to over explain and sometimes that's a good thing because it's interesting to read but there were lots of bits where he was just describing like scenery or like stuff that didn't make any sense or to me just wasn't interesting to read and I found myself trying to skip chunks like I just want to get to the like interesting like storyline part um yeah I didn't think it worked for me personally I know a lot of people like it I did I'd be interested to know if it's anybody's favorite book of the series because I mean I just don't understand it but maybe like I said it is my least favorite of the films as well so perhaps it's just that part of the story that I'm not a big fan of but hopefully if I read the third one I will think that it's an improvement and yeah we'll see this year but for me the second one was definitely a bit of a flop. Next up I have Landline by Rainbow Rowell um, which was a bit of a surprise to me because I've enjoyed every other Rainbow Rowell book that I've read. Um, I really really enjoyed um, Fangirl, I really liked Eleanor and Park, I liked Carry On. The only one I did not enjoy has been Landline. Now I mentioned in my video that went up last Wednesday which was about the 12 books I want to read in 2019 that I really want to read Attachments this year um, which is another adult one but this land Landline was the first of Rainbow Rowell's adult books that I've actually read and for me I did not enjoy it. Um, it basically follows a woman who um, has been kind of given a big break in her TV career over Christmas but it means that she can't go with her children and her husband to her husband's family's house which is what they're planning on doing for Christmas so he decides that he's going to take the two do two girls and go by himself and um, leave her behind which she's kind of shocked when he says he's going to do that because she's sort of expecting that he'll stay at home with her um, and then when so she's then at her parents house while he's away and she tries to ring him on an old um, one of those like wind up telephones that she has in her old childhood bedroom and um, he basically she gets through to him but it's him from the past like before they ever had children or anything like that and it's about that and how they kind of like communicate and it's very strange honestly the thing I didn't like about this I like time travel books a lot of the time but this wasn't like a proper time travel like it was kind of had elements and it was a very strange it was a bit all over the place there were some weird conversations there wasn't like a family unit in this and I think sometimes I feel like that's I don't know the way it was done it just felt very clunky and very kind of hit and miss for me and I just wasn't a fan um it kind of annoyed me that she didn't want to she wanted to 
this big break that she had but then when she was kind of given it and so she decided to take it and her family left she wasn't even interested in what her in the, the the tv show that they were doing so it just didn't make sense to me why she was basically throwing both things out of the window and that annoyed me yeah i didn't like this book i'm hoping i'll like attachments more even though it is another adult book but we'll see i'm not I just I just didn't like Landline I'm afraid. Next up we have The Bronze Horseman by Paulina Simons. Now I know I talked about this extensively when I read it so I'm not going to talk about it too much uh, but basically this follows a family basically in the Second World War in Russia. Now I've not read a book in Russia uh, set in Russia in the Second World War so I was very excited to read this. It's a very big book as well like I think it's like 800 pages or something like that um, and it did take me quite some time to read. However this basically follows a girl named Tatiana whose um, family, like I said, are living in Russia and uh, her oldest sister Dasha is engaged to a Russian soldier named Alexander. Then she falls in love with Alexander, he falls in love with her and they go behind her sister's back essentially. Um, and then lots of things happen which are very coincidental and like the plot was moved along by these random things happening even though in real life that would never have happened like it just was very much coincidental um and i felt like it was quite lazy writing also there is a lot of sexual violence in this there's a lot of um it's a very unhealthy relationship between tatiana and alexander he's very controlling physically emotionally sexually she is um, a virgin when they meet and essentially she has her first sexual experience with him at which point she tells him no she doesn't want to and he tells her yeah basically <laughs> not gonna go there but basically there's lots of kind of coaxing and he like beats her up at one point there's very much like it made me feel uncomfortable they were keeping her their relationship a secret um yeah and no that it upset me a lot reading it was very disturbing and i know this is quite controversial because i think i put a picture on instagram and i had people telling me this is the best book you don't understand it and i'm like well no i did understand it that was how i took it so if you love this book that's fine but for me it was not good <laughs> next up is a book that i was actually really excited to read and i was very much disappointed um i mentioned this book multiple times last year and i was like i need to read it this year in 2018 and I read it and hated it. Well, I didn't hate it, I really was very disappointed by it. And that is 1984 by George Orwell. Now this is essentially where Big Brother, or the idea of Big Brother comes from. This um, is set in a world where everybody's thoughts essentially are monitored. You're not allowed to do anything or say anything against the kind of policy makers, Big Brother basically. And um, yeah, they like, um, the main character his job is to rewrite news articles to make them like predict the right thing or to say like oh this didn't really happen and yeah i don't know there was just something i didn't mind the story the story was fine um up until about halfway through and then there was a essentially a dossier written by the kind of uh rebel essentially to big brother and um instead of just sort of talking about what's in the dossier they literally print the whole thing in the book which is like I don't even know how many pages like 50 pages long or something and it just bored me I was not interested and by that time I was like okay I don't really care anymore so yeah for me this was a big flop I really was not a fan and I just don't understand why people love it so much to be honest but each to their own next up is Monster Island by David Wellington which is a zombie novel that I read for the stand up to the TBR this year and although I have really enjoyed reading different books um, especially zombie novels this year I've enjoyed zombie novels this one was not one of the ones that I enjoyed I have said many times that I often think that zombie novels are quite like one like samey they're all the same um, and I find that when I see a good one, it's when they've kind of taken something and turned it on its head and made it a little bit different, um, which I've read some of those this year as well. Um, for me, this one was, it, it tried to be different, but unfortunately for me it failed. And I think it actually would have been better being one of those like one dimensional samey zombie novels. I think I probably would have enjoyed it more. Um, basically, this is a world obviously where everyone has turned into zombies. <laughs> And it follows a um, group of people who are trying to escape from those zombies. However, there has it, there is a particular zombie who has been 
elevated so like he can talk he knows what's going on like there's a relationship he has a relationship with this kind of god-like image and for me that's where it fell down there was like a religious undertone to this and um i think that for me ruined it i just didn't like that and i felt it was a bit kind of all over the place and it just wasn't wasn't my cup of tea so no for me that one didn't work um and uh i read it just to finish it for the stand up to the tbr to be honest but otherwise i probably would have dnf'd it then the penultimate one for me is The World is Full of Married Men by Jackie Collins. Now, I have really enjoyed a lot of Jackie Collins books in the past. I haven't really read any for quite a few years, but I decided to read this one because I'd had it on my shelf for quite some time. Now, I don't necessarily think that this has t like tainted it for me in terms of Jackie Collins because this um, is actually the first Jackie Collins book that ever came out. It was her debut novel and I do think that she's got better over time and um, obviously, unfortunately, Jackie Collins has passed away now, but I think that um, the first one is not an indication of kind of all of her books. I think it just genuinely was her first one and how it came about. Now, it was an interesting story, but basically, if, um, it basically follows a man who is um, having an affair with a model who's much younger than his wife. And then he decides one day he's going to leave his wife so that he can kind of be uh, with this girl. But she decides, I'm not having any of that. I don't want to be in a relationship. I just basically want to have casual sex, which is what they were doing. Um, and yeah it's essentially about that there's lots of other storylines in it which is what Jackie Collins is good at she talks about um there's lots of little storylines that all kind of are happening at the same time which is quite interesting um this one I felt like although it was interesting that there was this woman who was like I don't want a man like it's in and that was interesting and I think that was kind of before it's time because I think these days this it's much more of a prominent thing that women can kind of do what they want but I think back then a lot of the time it was very much a man's world especially the entertainment industry um so i do think that was an interesting point but for me i don't know there was just, it didn't work for me i felt like it was quite uh there was still a few bits in it where it was like the guy told her what to do and she went along with it kind of thing and that was a bit weird and some of the storylines i wasn't that interested in whereas there were a few that kind of a couple of others that i was more interested in so i was like hoping for those parts more it's also not a very big book but yeah just for me this was wasn't wasn't a book for me unfortunately but it's not going to stop me reading more jackie collins in the future and then the final book in my worst books of 2018 is hashtag fashion victim by amina akhtar now i feel like i have talked about this quite a lot this was actually the first net galley book that i was ever um, approved for and I am appreciative for that unfortunately though I really did not enjoy it um, it basically follows a girl who is follows a girl who works for a fashion house and she is a psychopathic killer and she's killing all of her colleagues and um, nobody knows it's her uh, this was basically pitched as um, the Devil Wears Prada meets American Psycho and I should have known I wasn't going to like this because I hated American Psycho the film. I haven't read the book but I don't feel like I'm going to do that. Um, essentially it was just her pl plotting and also actually uh, murdering people in lots of different ways with lots of random things happening. It also had a lot of, um, so the girl who was doing all the killing uh, is not your kind of like f stereotypical super skinny um, fashion house work like call it um employee uh she was a bit bigger maybe and they kept talking about how she needed to lose weight and i don't know i was like oh so it's the fat chubby one in the group that is the serial killer great that's a lovely image for that so yeah i didn't like this book at all i felt it was very damaging and just didn't make me feel good about myself honestly so yeah not a fan of that one uh but uh if you liked it or if it sounds like something you would like then feel free like go and check it out because um i do think it's great when debut novel debut authors um publish for the first time but yeah i just i wasn't a fan of this there you have it guys that is my 10 worst books of 2018 um i hope that you are having a much better 2019 i'm reading better books than that <laughs> um give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it and let me know in the comments down below what your least favorite books of 2018 were and let's hope for a much better reading year in 2019 see you next time guys Bye bye